All right, so you guys don't want to miss this one. We're going to be breaking down tokenization of digital assets, but also securities, how this plays into the bigger market architecture that essentially is being built right now. And it's kind of what's happening behind the scenes. You guys don't want to miss this. We're going to break it down for you. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into TechPath. This was a report uh, that really got into the state of tokenization. If you think about the state of tokenization and what it means to business, what it means to economies, what we're about to see in blockchain is pretty dynamic. And so we're, we're going to show you some clips today that will probably blow your mind. I mean, if you've been in business, if you've been involved in organizations, you're going to see some pretty cool st stuff here today. Just to give you a kind of a table of con contents here, tokenized assets, venues, demos, they did a full report here. I want to jump over to the first section here, which really is talking about the capacity of size. And a couple of things that they highlight here in the total assets is that right now we're talking about 6 million daily active users, settlement of like super fast, around half a second. And right now, 58% of this all in Ethereum accounts, over 58%, which is about $69 billion. Further on down in the, in the what they call the 2030 opportunity, let me zoom in on that just a little bit here. You're gonna see a couple of note numbers here. You're gonna see the $3.5 trillion number. This is the potential market addressable that is out there, but that's the bear market, and up to 10 trillion in the bull case by 2030. All of this happening by 2030. Further in this report, over if you guys are following, this is on page eight of this report. This starts breaking down some of the blockchains. Obviously, you see Solana and Avalanche there, and the cool thing that you're gonna start paying attention to is uh, exactly what's happening in terms of the amount of interoperability that we'll talk about in a second, but also just how much Ethereum is playing a role in this. And further into this, I just wanna show the blockchains that are available. So you see Circle right there at number two, the reason at 24 billion on AUM, but right now Ethereum and then that doesn't work too well, but Ethereum and 14 blockchains. Let me kind of zoom in on that a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. And 14 blockchains that are integrated into this. Now that to me is one of the reasons we're gonna to continue to see Circle USDC win the case going forward because the future of blockchain and tokenized assets is who can bring the tool sets to the table to make it really easy to use. Now I'll show you what that might look like. You can kind of see the tokenized users there starting to, to grow. This is going back to August 2020 it's, or April 2020. Hard to read on that chart. But the point is, is that this is an up and to the right growth. Now, when you look at the pivotal moment for crypto adoption, this is really where we are right now is this whole crash point that we are dealing with today. And then what could happen on the other side of this is what they call a recomposition of the market. And that is because people have been building so much in this bear market, we're gonna to start to see applications and really the use of those applications starting to roll out into real business and become mature. Once they become mature, that's when, it's like e-commerce. Think about when e-commerce was first starting, first time you ever used a credit card on the internet, it's like that. You were very skeptical, then all at once, bam, it's available everywhere. That's exactly what we will probably see here going forward. I want to go to this first, uh, actually, let me go over to this last slide right here. This is the, the size of the market. Again, multi-trillion dollar market. Let me kind of zoom in on that a little bit. 3.5 trillion right now in the bear, the base case, 6.8 trillion, and then 9.9 .9 trillion by 2030 on the bull case. So you can see this really started to, to really take a huge, huge growth in the potential. And remember, this is a very, very small percentage of the market. That's the other scenario that plays out. I look at adoption like we saw in social, mobile, all the tech models that we've seen over the past two, three decades. I don't think this is going to be any different. And that is tokenization of digital assets in general, but also the use case of smart contracts and blockchain. Now I know to some of you, maybe you're coming to our channel for the first time, step back, you know, take a deep breath, subscribe right now. If you are in business today, or if you're looking at investing in things like this technology, you wanna stick around on this channel because we break down a lot of these kind of things that will give you guys some insights going forward. All right, tokenized treasuries, you can kind of see the value continuing to grow right here. Uh, obviously, when you go to, to 
just to the, to the rwa.xyz. This will kind of give you a site that you can track this on an ongoing basis, along with the yield right now to maturity that's available. Again, Ethereum holding at around 370 million, so over half of what we have currently uh, in tokenized treasuries. This is, again, going to be another area where we're going to see just absolute explosion. I want to jump to this first clip of Jeremy Allaire, who is the CEO over at Circle, which is, of course, USDC, he is the stablecoin, if you're brand new, a stablecoin that essentially is pegged to the U.S. dollar and how it's going to be integrated into society. Listen in. We have decisively entered the utility value phase of blockchains and digital currency. This will scale, scale to billions of people and millions of businesses and trillions of dollars of economic activity in the coming years. We have many companies in here, both very large companies and startups that are tokenizing real world assets, treasury bills, digital funds, and other things. Blockchains are internet infrastructure. So many people, when they hear about blockchains, they think it's a financial thing. It's not. It's not financial infrastructure. Any more than HTTP is financial infrastructure, or the domain name system, or the email system is financial infrastructure. We have network infrastructure. We have protocols that do a lot of things. And we build a lot of applications and services on those. The three pillars of the Circle platform are our stablecoin infrastructure, stablecoin liquidity, and what we call Web3 services. Is the world ready? There's been five to 10 years of building and doing by tens of thousands of companies and, 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 and people all around the world. And we find ourselves here today with this technology because of people building and doing. And as a result of that hard work, Web3 digital assets are now a major national priority around the world. It's because of what we've built, not because we're waiting for policy. As of 2024, I believe we will be able to say that is the year that stablecoins became a new form of money in the world economy. All right, so they released this platform. This is on the Circle website, and it really gets into um, building with smart contracts, and they make it very simple to use. And again, this is the other factor that so many businesses that are out there, just like when you started building on the web, the easier it was, the more integration you started to see, and that's exactly what's happening right now. A couple of things they're doing within it, increased loyalty and customer engagement. You'll really get that. You'll understand how that means and what it means to tokens that are really doing that. You can, of course, scale this now. And then they're getting into Web3 interactions. So apps, they're what they call an integrated uh, smart contract using these REST APIs, which is basically how they plug into Circle, okay? It's very simple. I should say simple. It's easy in the sense of use for a dev, but it's simple to understand of how you can apply this into an app. And then uh, acceleration, they've got some templates coming soon, other things. I'm gonna show you a few clips of examples of how apps are integrating into this. Let's go to this first clip. Our first pilot customer is Grab. There were some coupons issued to users. These are NFTs. And these wallets are user controlled. So users use email ID and password and a pin code. And this experience is running on Polygon. But if Grab wanted to try another blockchain, they could do it in minutes. It's a parameter in an API. So in this entire flow, there is no concept of gas. There is no Matic being used by the user or being seen by the user. Here, there's a detail where you see that the blockchain fee is paid by Grab. All right, so Grab being a online platform for food delivery, product services, think of it like a Postmates or something like that, maybe even an Uber Eats. But the cool thing is, is they're doing it with very limited fees, gasless in essence. And that's when I get into the intriguing factor to this, because this starts to reduce fees in a big way. Let's go to this next clip to talk about how it's done under the hood. Listen in. Behind the scenes, I'll describe what they're doing. Here, Paymaster is the contract that is paying gas on behalf of the Grab users. Over here, you're first setting a policy to say that how much is the max and min spend you want to allow on the wallet. So you're completely customizing the gas experience and you will see a full log of how much each wallet is using. All right, so again, this goes back to inside and under the hood of Circle with Paymaster riding on the Ethereum mainnet, being able to do these transactions in a gasless format, because this has been the big problem and the knock that I think a lot of people look at in terms of blockchain. Well, you know, if you get into the Ethereum ecosystem, there's too much gas fees. So obviously we see this in the layer twos that apply to this, and whether you're thinking Polygon, you want to even flip over and look at something like Solana. 
or you're looking at what's happening even within the avalanche ecosystem. There's other options out here, but the point being is that this starts to really go in a direction of being able to build on Web3 for businesses. Let's go to this next clip real quick. I think you guys will get the picture. So next is a smart contract platform. So imagine if this business, within a few lines of code, to embed a savings account in this app that auto-generates yields by rounding up every purchase to a dollar. Uh, as of today, this product is live today. So you can go and import a contract. Um, here I am, is in the example, I'm importing a Uniswap contract. And the platform generates REST APIs. So what you see over here, the code, this is the code that most of the developers around the world are familiar with. It's REST APIs. This is the experience that Koala can enable. Every purchase is rounded up. ETH is bought programmatically. And that ETH is staked using the staking call from the contract. And the user, as they make purchases, they keep earning returns on that. To do this, a developer would need to spend maybe a day. This is how simple it is. All right, so I want to pause here on this slide within his presentation, because there's some key things here that really recreate retail systems, e-commerce, all sorts of things that will apply to what blockchain is doing. So automatic invoicing and payments, you already have already seen this out there. Lending, borrow, and yield, which is ironic that this could happen inside an app, especially around loyalty. So think about loyalty rewards, rewards now getting the opportunity to earn yield that's paid in USDC issuing NFTs for games, but also assets of digital replicas, et cetera, that could play into this of your products and then tokenized loyalty points. You, you get the point here. It redefines how customers will interact with just commerce in general. And that I think is the thing that a lot of people are missing going forward. Last up here, just to give you an, an idea of pricing for the smart contract platform they're talking about. These are the monthly API calls. So free 25K a month, then it kind of flows down here. And this is, Circle did not tell us to do this. It's not an ad for Circle. I'm just showing you, these are the kind of platforms that are being built right now that we think are going to completely revolutionize the future of commerce. Even Alaire even said it, multi-trillions of business that will be coming online in a very, very short period of time. I wanna go over to this tweet right here. This was Circle coming out this year's Breakpoint. This was an interesting statement will be one to remember. Now you could say that's something, but Breakpoint's a pretty big deal. The reason, remember, is Breakpoint is the Solana event. Think of it as, as their Super Bowl. It's when all of their developers come out, they, they're building new products, new services, or they're launching new features. All that happening uh, in really in a matter of days, I think it's sort of the end of this month. So a lot happening. If you guys are following Ch Solana, we'll probably jump to the charts here in a minute. But further into this and down here, they go into a statement right here. Make sure you come by the Circle Lounge at Breakpoint 2023 from October 31st to November 3rd and experience the live net demos. We'll reveal our special guests. So Circle's got something planned and it's gonna be one to remember. Something big is gonna happen here, guys. And it's probably gonna be something with a major either retail platform, payment platform, it's Solana related. Remember, Solana is highly integrated into pay payment opportunities. Remember Solana being the, to uh, the blockchain of choice by Visa for testing simply because of TPS, which is just trans transactions per second, which in my opinion is, it's the killer app of anything that's gonna work in blockchain and for the future of retail going forward. So lots and lots of stuff happening. I wanna go out and hit our last Actually, I got, got a couple clips here. I, I think this might be our last one. Let's go to this clip real quick. The era of real world assets on chain is here. We empower merchants to liquidate luxury assets faster, powered by compressed NFTs. Purchasing tickets is as simple as entering the quantity and pressing the purchase button. Voila, you're done. Compressed NFTs enable us to incorporate on-chain game theory and unique interactions between our platform and users. The era of real-world assets on-chain is here. All right, so lots happening there for sure. Solana, compressed NFTs, the capability of what will be going into things like luxury items and many more. You saw Phantom was a good example of the web wallet there that was being used. But this is something that I think when you compare, because this gives us an alternative to ETH, Solana's kind of the hedge. So you could build on either. But the cool thing is that Circle's starting to integrate to both. So very cool stuff for sure. Meanwhile, we've got some other things happening over on Lightning Labs to enable stable coins on Bitcoin, 
ecosystem with Taproot assets. So this is interesting. Couple of facts here, Taproot assets, Lightning Network users can hold assets beyond Bitcoin in their wallets. So they're really just talking about holding additional tokens. Other layer two protocols such as Stacks, Liquid Network, also improving transaction speed and reducing congestion on Bitcoin. That's something that's coming down the pipe. So we've kind of covered all the blockchains here, looking at Bitcoin, what that is. They're, I would say Bitcoin is much further behind with what's happening in the ETH ecosystem and within the Solana ecosystem especially with the fact that you've got Circle ramping up the potential of integrating this into retail business on scale. That's the key here. Being able to scale this into mass adoption in a period of time in which is very critical. And I think that's the thing that you have to think about. I wanna jump back to this chart right here. This is that critical adoption moment. And remember, that all this happened, here was the Bitcoin white paper, and you can kind of see it all the way down to the Solana launch in 2020, Polygon launch in 2020, Lido. So right now we're approaching this synergy stage, which is where we're gonna see a lot of this moving forward. Taking a look at the charts right now, Solana moving up uh, a little bit of action right now. We'll go up here on the four hour, yeah. But I was looking back on this because this shows a little bit of price resistance right here around the $25 mark. Question is whether or not it can hit up here in that 30 buck range which may happen if you look at the things that we'll get in terms of news on Breakpoint, which is just a few days away. So lots potentially moving on. Uh, Solana holding it around 25 bucks. Love to know if you guys are investing in Solana. Is this one of your tokens? Make sure and drop some comments down below and make sure and smash the like button if you like this kind of video. Uh, also, if you're not in the Diamond Circle, get in now. It's one of the best places to get additional content. Very simple, just click a link down below, you'll get to it. And you can follow me out there on X at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.